is bias, a non-conscious bias. Okay, I, I don't want to talk about conscious bias because that's a different topic, but let's talk about non-conscious bias. Non-conscious bias is present, happens to all of us every day, all the time. And um, it's our tendency to think a certain categorical way, right? Um, that operates below our consciousness, right? And it gets hired, hardwired into our brains. Now, the worst thing that can happen with, in assessment with non-conscious bias is that the assessor who may be having some non-conscious bias is not really seeing us for who we are and that non-conscious bias is impacting the assessment of your child, okay? Non-conscious bias impacts um, our mental representations of others. Let me put that in English. In other words, it can impact our perception of other people in very particular ways, okay? So one of the ways that can happen is um, non-conscious bias can dehumanize the other person, right? We can perceive others as not equal full people, right? And what that, that feels like to us is we're being ignored. Like we don't even matter. We're not even in the room. What we say doesn't seem to be landing anywhere because we are being dehumanized. I'm talking about extremes right now, okay? And also, so the blue is what's happening with the bias, the non-conscious bias, and the orange is how it might feel like to you, okay? Another thing that happens is that our experience as a human gets devalued, right? Your experiences get negated, which makes you feel inept, right? Makes you feel like you're just an inept parent. Like I suck as a parent. That's why all this stuff is happening, right? And the other thing that happens um, in non-conscious bias is that it can feel like um, you don't know what, how, what to do and you have no ability to do anything. So it takes away your agency and you feel powerless, okay? So when you start to feel like ignored, and inept and powerless, you have to wonder, is there something going on here? Is there some non-conscious bias happening? So what can I do if this is happening, right? First of all, bring in other perspectives, multiple perspectives, right? And building consensus around multiple perspectives holds everybody accountable, right? and will result in us coming to consensus, right? So that the non-conscious bias gets outweighed by everyone else's perspective. It's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is push for transparency. Ask for questions about how the, clini the clinician is thinking. How are decisions made? How can you participate in the process? Show me the cans. Ask questions of, that lead to transparency around the process. Provide feedback. I'm really uncomfortable with that question you just asked me in the way you asked me. Can you ask me in a different way? Right? Provide feedback as often as you can. Okay? Trust your instincts and get some support. Talk to someone you trust, someone who's been through the process before, ask, tell them what happened, get their feedback and strategize with them a way you can come back in and give feedback. Sometimes it's hard to give feedback in the moment, right? Especially when you're talking to someone who is the gatekeeper of your getting help for your child. It can be hard to give them feedback, but you have to to help address what might be happening, particularly around non-conscious bias. Let me stop there and see if there are any thoughts or reflections before I go into just some quick tips before I end. Fabulous. I would, uh, yes, um, before you started this last session or just as you did section, um, mm -hmm. we had a lot of parents talking to us about their own triggering 
and mm -hmm. how difficult it is to be who they feel they need to be and want to be for their children mm -hmm. because they are getting so triggered. And then that is um, really uh, affecting the parent-child relationship in yeah. some ways. So I just, um, I mean, we have several comments to that effect. So I just wanted to share that that is how people are feeling. Yeah, it's, it's a super common reaction, but I didn't say that to minimize it. I say that because it's something that we all should surface and talk about, right? If there's a chance to have a conversation, if you, um, if the, your child's therapist is someone you can talk to about that, I would talk about that. Um, if there's another um, uh, family uh, parent who is going through something similar, talk about that because it's real, right? If you feel like you could use, you know, some help in just talking it with someone, uh, a therapist of your own, that's also helpful too, right? Um, it's inevitable that you're gonna get triggered, right? What happens in, I'm gonna talk about something that's really obvious, but um, bear with me, right? Children use us as their frontal lobes when they're born. Right, children are born, their frontal lobes are not fully developed. And I'm not making a joke, it's for, for real, right? Um, what does your frontal lobe do? That part, front part of your brain. It helps you organize, plan, and make decisions, right? Children are terrible at all of those things, right? They need to learn, and it also inhibits our behavior, right? So helps you not touch stuff you're not supposed to touch, helps you not run around when you're not supposed to run, right? So th that's what our frontal lobes do. We are the frontal lobes for our children for uh, at least their first five years, and they start to learn how to have more of their own executive functioning. That's what frontal lobes do, right? So kids are used, I bring that up because kids are used to putting stuff for us to figure out and give it back to them figured out, especially around emotions. So what happens was, is with kids, they want you, they wanna know that you're right there with them. So they're gonna trigger you. And if they're triggering something that, you know, is a wound, something painful, something you may have worked through, but not fully, they're gonna go there. And so it's about finding support for when you get triggered because they're not trying to piss you off. They're trying to say, mom, dad, figure this out for me because I can't figure out how to do it myself, right? That's what's happening emotionally. That's what's happening in that attachment relationship with you. So um, it's okay to get help, right? And you don't have to go into deep analysis to get help. You can say, hey, my son is working through, or my daughter is working through this, it's triggering me. And I need to figure out a way to help them in that moment and then get help for myself at another time. 